So far we have seen simple gear trains, compound gear trains and epicyclic gear trains. Now we are going to look at a gear train which allows us very large velocity ratios in a single stage and yet it is very compact in construction. To understand the principle behind it, let us look at these two rulers kept end to end matching like this. So all the graduations on them are exactly matched. Now we are going to take uh, one of these rulers, say this one, the top one, and we are going to scale it about its zeroth graduation so that the graduation number 10 comes and matches with graduation number 9 on the lower ruler. You might have seen similar situation in a vernier caliper where there are 10 graduations on the vernier scale matching with 9 graduations on the main scale. And that allows us to measure small distances as small displacements of the vernier jaw. As the jaw gets displaced through very minute distances, say this much, okay, successive uh, graduations will make a match. For example, when you move through this much distance, these two will match. If you move through twice the distance, the second pair will match. Thrice the displacement would match the third one and so on. And we are going to take this principle and we are going to reverse it so that instead of getting the displacement producing a match, we are going to first make an engagement through some gear teeth or some of some kind uh, to produce small displacements and thereby this engagement will produce a very large velocity ratio. So here we have added these wedge shaped projections to each of the graduation on the lower scale and we have added these red projections to each of the graduation on the vernier scale. Then we are going to displace these top graduations downward so that they come in successive engagement with the wedges uh, on the lower scale. And that is going to displace the lower scale slowly towards the left. So 10 engagements would produce 10 small leftward displacements uh, of the lower scale. Let's see it happening in motion. So here you can see the first one, uh, first engagement is about to happen. Uh, let's set it in motion. And you can see successive pairs are coming into contact, thereby pushing the lower scale leftward. So this idea of engaging 10 graduations on one body with 9 graduations on the other looks promising in achieving high velocity ratios. Because when these 10 projections engage with uh, the 10 projections on the lower body, the lower body effectively moves by just one tooth. So we have achieved just a single tooth movement after 10 teeth engagements and a velocity ratio of 1 is to 10 is attained here. All we need to do now is wrap these projections or teeth around two discs or cylinders so that we will get a gear pair that will do the same thing. Let us now build a physical gear system based on this concept. So we are going to start with a disc like this and we are going to rotate it not about its geometric center but about a point little away from it. So its motion will be like this eccentric on which we are going to mount a gear and we have allowed relative motion. And that's why although this eccentric is rotating, the gear is only translating on a circular path. Now we are going to add a stator to this system like this. And you can see there is engagement between these two bodies. So now when the eccentric rotates, the gear cannot just translate anymore. It will have to rotate as well. Let's see that motion. So you can see the eccentric is rotating in a counterclockwise manner while the gear mounted on that is rotating in a clockwise manner. Let us figure out the velocity ratio we have achieved here. For that, I'm going to number all the teeth here. So stator and rotor teeth. You can see there are 12 teeth on the stator or the internal gear or 12 recesses, you can say. And uh, there are 11 teeth on the gear. Just watch one of these teeth, say teeth, tooth number one, as the engagement happens. So let's set it in motion. After one rotation, tooth number one has moved by one recess. After two rotations, it has moved by two and so on. So one rotation of the eccentric is producing the movement of just one tooth of the gear. So since it has 11 teeth, we have achieved a ratio of one is to 11. In fact, ratios as high as 85 or above are also possible in a single stage using this arrangement. And with three stages, people go as high as 4,000.